Hi, in today's video, we will see how we can place data labels on various types of bar charts. For example, in the first chart, we have single bars and the data labels have been placed on top. In this one, we have a stacked bar. And in the third one, we have a 100% filled bar chart. In the last chart, we have actually rotated the chart to a horizontal position and the data labels are still accurate. So let's see how we can do that. We would be using two packages, ggplot2 and scales. So let's have some data. So I'm using the built-in data set called mpg, which comes in the ggplot2 package. So if I put it into another data frame called df, you can see that we have various columns in there, manufacturers and the models. And you can see that we have 234 rows in that. So let's create our first chart. On the x-axis, we are using the manufacturers. And notice that I haven't given any y-axis to this because the jom bar automatically takes the count as the standard statistics. So you can notice that if I run this, we get a, a bar plot. And this indicates the number of, or the frequency or the number of records which belong to Audi, Chevrolet, etc. And we can also do the same thing to show the frequency instead of the actual count, we can use, and notice that I'm using it in, in, in the y-axis now in the AES, saying after stat count divided by the sum of the count, that'll give, give us the frequency. And then similarly in the label, I'm putting the after stat count, then I'm multiplying it by 100, rounding it by one, and then putting a label at the end using the paste zero. And let's see what it does for us. This time, we're actually showing the percentage on the on the axis. And the percentage for each car has been shown as well. So Audi has the 7.7% of the market and Chevrolet has 8.1% of the total number of cars available and so on. Now, let's produce our second chart to see how we can stack the, the, the bars on top of each other. So if I run this together, this time the bars have been stacked. So instead of the 18 cars which Audi had, it is now showing as a split saying three of them belong to the mid-size class and 15 of them belong to the compact size. And similarly, all the data labels have been placed accordingly. And you can control your data labels using the jump text. You can adjust the V justification. V justification pulls the so if I remove this V justification to zero, you would see what happens now. The position has changed. Putting it to 0 0.5 actually gives a nice result. So it's bang in the middle of each section. Now another variation. This time I want to do a 100% fill bar chart. So notice that I've given a fill here in the AES in the ggplot, and I'm using the position equals position fill. Now the trick is you have to use this position equals position fill in the JOM bar as well as in JOM text. Most of the times, if you ignore this in your JOM text, you will have the, the text strongly placed. You can see that it's a 100% fill bar chart. And on the left-hand side, we have the percentage and the data labels are right in the middle. And if I now try to show you by removing the position in the jump text, you would see what happens. See that it doesn't know how to place the, the data labels now. So put it back and all is well. Now, let's, lastly, let's see how we can rotate our charts to a horizontal position instead of the vertical one. And in the same script as before, all I'm doing is adding this extra line saying coordinate flip. So this will flip the chart to a horizontal position. And you can see it, it has been rotated and the data labels are still intact and nicely placed. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.